Hello, I'm Armin Budish. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, a chew! Are spring flowers making your allergies blossom? We'll offer ways to nip those sniffles in the bud. Then, most people have no real understanding of annuities, even people who own them. We'll help analyze annuities. We'll make sure your smile is in tip top shape. Plus, we'll reveal the histrionic filled history behind a reimagined hotel. And we'll explain how to get a cost free loan. It's time to get geoing, so pull up a chair, join us at our kitchen table for golden opportunities. While we may be thrilled to see the snow go, warming, warmer weather means we're welcoming another issue, allergies. Dr. Akalish Chokse is here to help us with our hay fever. Dr. Chokse is the director of the Metro Health Allergy and Immunology Clinic. Thanks for joining us, doctor. Sure, thank you. Doctor, most of our viewers know that when spring comes around, hay fever, that means you know sneezing, itchy eyes, but it means a whole lot more than that to some people too, doesn't it? A absolutely. Um, as you said, everybody knows about the nose and the eyes problem. But the way you should think about allergy is it's a immune response. So it's a response of the airway as well as the immune system. And uh, immune airway starts from the nose, goes all the way down to the chest. So sure, uh, eyes, nose, sinusitis, headaches. But a lot of folks will have, and I would urge to those listening to the show that should they feel that they have more asthma problem in spring or summer or fall, uh, which flares up, then maybe it's underlying allergies doing it to them. All right, so what are some of the other symptoms that people would run into? Um, they will run into, for instance, you go for a morning jog, let's get some fresh air. So when you get out there and start jogging, then you say, you know what, I cannot do my normal routine because, you know, I feel a little tight. The, the, all the pollens outside, trees will come first, grass will come later, and then uh, uh, weeds will come. They all are heavier in the morning, so it's not a good idea for the joggers to go and jog should they have asthma or allergies because the, the environment is heavier, so condensation brings all the allergens down. So, so maybe later in the day might be better. Yeah, after 5 to 10, we would say, you know, stay clear when it is much uh, later in the day and warmer, it, it is actually better. Uh, skin, skin rashes, that's a, a problem? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad you brought it up because uh, a lot of patients tend to have generalized discomfort, itchiness, maybe some rashes. If the pollen lands on the skin, it can stir up the immune system reaction there. So a lot of people will have a particular rash come and leave uh, and generalized sensation of itchiness that time. And uh, uh, you mentioned to me uh, that fruit, even yeah. eating fruit can be yeah. uh, cause, cause the hay fever symptoms. What tell me about that? Yeah. Um, the way I explain to the, the residents we teach and the patient is the, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> and what it really means, like parents, like children. And what we need to start thinking that the trees and the weeds are the source of the fruits and vegetables. So everything comes from there. So if you're very allergic to the, to the mom or dad or the tree, like a birch tree, apple cross reacts. So a lot of patients will avoid cantaloupe or honeydew or apple or pineapple because then they eat it, their mouth gets problem. But it is coming because if you're very allergic to the tree, you're also allergic to part of the trees, which is fruits and vegetables. So tell us, tell our viewers, are there things people can do if you've got a, a hay fever problem, what, how can you make sure you can live your life normally? Uh, yeah, I think that there are a variety of medications. First thing is really, I mean, not every medication will work for everybody. Always better to go and see your local allergy immunologist, they can help. Okay. Second thing is, if you have a very nice wooded yard, what you really need to do is don't open the window and sleep the window open because as you open the window, the pollens will ingress inside the room. So turn on that air conditioning sometimes. And air conditioning will definitely help as well with the, keeping the dust mites down uh, there as and well. And there are creams you can use as well? Yeah, you can uh, use all the cream for the skin, but again, if you use a lot of cream in the daytime and you go for a jog, it'll attract the pollen, capture oh, it. So maybe stay so away from the cream. Stay away from cream in the morning, but in the afternoon you could, you could do that. Ah, gotcha. So, well, thank you very much. This sure. has been a lot of information that 
people generally don't know. Right. Thank you, Thank doctor. You. Thank you. Dr. Chalkse's advice is nothing to sneeze at. Follow his tips to alleviate some of the impact of your allergies. And for more help, use the information that's coming up next. You don't want to suffer unnecessarily. My thanks to uh, Dr. Chakse for helping us all breathe a little easier. To schedule an appointment with the Metro Health Allergy and Immunology Clinic, call 216-778-2213. And for more information, visit www.metrohealth.org slash allergy clinic. Want more Metro Health medical information? Be sure to tune in to WTAM 1100 Radio each Saturday morning at 7 for Metro Health and You, hosted by Dr. Christine Alexander. Next, the ABCs of annuities. But first, today we tend to color away our gray. But early on in America, our founding fathers found white wigs were the way to go. Still, they had to keep that color clean. So how did they whiten and brighten them way back when? We'll have the answer in less than a minute. Welcome to Breckenridge Village, a continuing care retirement community conveniently located in historic Willoughby, Ohio. Whether it's a luxury apartment, a spacious ranch home, or newly built brownstones, it's all here with the added security of knowing more care is available when you need it. Breckenridge Village offers an exciting and upbeat lifestyle, and the food is fabulous, and our staff makes you their number one priority. Learn more about Breckenridge Village and come see our new Veal Wellness and Aquatic Center. There's more than a grain of truth to the tale that rice was ground to keep patriotic wigs their whitest. The pulverized powder proved to be a palatable soil-fighting solution. What comes to mind when you hear the term audit? Overwhelming anxiety, nervous, paperwork, panic, worried about what it could mean to you? Relax, Rick Nye's here to tell us about an audit that will put your mind at ease because this one is for any annuities you may have. Rick's the CEO and president of Nye Financial Group. Thanks for joining us, Rick. Thank you. Thank Rick, you. let's start basic. What is an annuity? Simply stated, uh, an annuity is a series of periodic payments that can be uh, paid out over a period certain or over a designated life or lives. And is your money invested if it's an annuity? Um, yes, and uh, that that's part of the um, the, the, the issue as far as the complications and the, and the confusion. Uh, and there's a lot of complications and confusions. You know, I, I work with a lot of people who have annuities and I would guess most people don't even understand what they have. Is, is this audit that you're talking about a way for people to understand what, what's in the uh, annuity? Absolutely. We sit down, we, uh, a lot of times in my office we'll um, we'll call the insurance company in the client's presence and we'll go through a checklist uh, and we'll get from the horse's mouth uh, the, the detail of the, the provisions, the benefits, uh, the various attributes, the cash value, surrender value. Uh, there's a lot that goes into that. Can you do that with someone even before they buy the annuity if they're thinking about it? Uh, no, that would be something we would, we would go over um, through a fact-finding process, what, what is important to them, and then go out and find I the see. annuity that would, uh, so would you'd, most benefit them. You'd, f you'd first determine what a person wants and needs, and then right. find something to fit that. Right. The audit is more, more for, uh, you purchase the annuity, you're confused, let's, let's shed some light on it. So how, tell me how the audit works. Well, again, we, uh, w in many cases, whether it be uh, on a three-way phone conversation with our client or uh, in my office, we will follow up with that carrier. Uh, we will get authorization from the client to release the information uh, to me. I, will, I know the questions to ask. I know uh, what we need to, uh, to determine, to find out, uh, to then, again, help the client understand what they've purchased. And typically, what kind of information does the client get when you go through this audit? Um, the tax status uh, of the uh, annuity, is it qualified? I mean, is it IRA? Uh, is it KEO? Um, we also uh, want to determine whether it's fixed or variable or fixed indexed. The fees that are associated uh, uh, with uh, annuities, some have fees, some don't. 
uh, the titling of the annuity, the owner who controls the contract, the annuitant who the annuity is placed on, and obviously the beneficiaries, and just uh, tying everything together so they have a, an appreciation of what, what they own. Does a person find out what the value of their annuity is? There, there, uh, it, that's a, a big confusing aspect of it too because there are um, various different values. There are um, the surrender value, uh, there is the accumulated value, there is uh, an income benefit value, and a, and a death benefit value for most annuity contracts. And all those things are different? All of them are di can be different at any given time uh, in, in the history of the annuity. So uh, there's a lot of terms there. Can I get you back to talk about what some of those terms mean? What's uh, the different types of fix, variable, fix index, so those sorts of things? People need to understand that. Yes. And we only have limited time today, yes. but I'd love to get you back to talk about that if you want. Mike. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. Appreciate that very much. An annuity audit can uncover important facts that impact your financial future. To ask for an annuity audit or to get more information now, give Rick a call and we're going to get him back too, but his number's coming up next. To learn more, call the Nye Financial Group Incorporated at 1-800-837-8848. Or log on to their website, www.nigroup.com. Next, why a beautiful mouth is your best makeup. Looking for places to go, things to do? Welcome to our community calendar. Don't be a sap. Tap into the fun of the Geauga County Maple Festival on Chardon Square, April 25th through the 28th. Enjoy activities that range from syrup judging to bathtub races to grandstand entertainment. To find out more, stick to calling 440-286-2600 or pouring over their website, www.maplefestival.com. Let's be honest, going to the dentist isn't something people often put at the top of their fun things to do list. Yet dentist Steve Marsh has won several awards in patient care and satisfaction. What's he doing that actually has people looking forward to getting their teeth treated? Let's ask him. Thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure, Armin. Thank you. All right. You. So, you know, you've won awards. You've gotten all kinds of uh, 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 recognition for clients' satisfaction. How do you keep your patients happy? Well, you know, what, and how should a dentist generally do? You that? know, you know what we're doing right now, where we're sitting together and getting to know each other. You really need to have a dentist who's enthusiastic, just like you need an attorney who's enthusiastic or an annuity person who's enthusiastic. So one of the things we do is we try to sit down and get to meet people. We don't put you in a dental chair, and I think all dentists should do it and get a sense of what the patient wants and patient needs. And we try to uh, receive the patient. We don't have you wait. That's all very important. Here's a, p a picture of our office of our uh, Amy and Karen and our staff. They always have smiling faces and they answer the phone with a smile because we know that it's not everybody's favorite thing. This, this is my favorite part of your office. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no question. So in our reception area, we don't call it a waiting room because we try not to have people wait. We actually have some snacks. We have fairly healthy snacks and coffee and water and some snacks because we know that we do all we can to make it pleasant. Now, this is very important these days, Armin. This is a sterilizer. There's been a lot of media uh, attention to the sterilization in medical and dental offices. This is a sterilizer so that every patient should have the most sterile instruments. The sterilizer does it in six to 10 minutes. And so in most dental offices today, you have to be very careful that everything is taken care of in a very kind, considerate way. And in Amy, our hygienist here, her room is actually wrapped in plastic. Whether it's the light up on top that she uses, whether it's the chair itself, she's using a gown, which is also something that increases the sterilization and makes sure that, that patients are comfortable. And we need to make people as comfortable as possible. It's critically important. So, you know, how does a, a person check out a, a dentist's credentials? Is there any way to do that? You know, what their practices are? before they you know, sign up? Well, again, it's not unlike with an attorney. One of the things, you, we all have websites today, and I think the website gives you a little clue as to what the dentist thinks is important, that sort of thing. There's a thing like Angie's List. You mentioned the National Magazine. That's one of the ones that's given us some attention. It's been very gratifying. Uh, and also, you know, friends. But I think what's really important is for the patient to come in 
and ask if they can meet the dentist and sit down That's a together. Great idea. Will a dentist do that? The most dentists do and, and also should, the same way you as an attorney. You need to know what you're looking at before you, uh, you need to do your due diligence. And then you get a feel for the person's passion. Again, you really need someone who loves what they do. And, and you know, you, I know you get a lot of letters from people uh, with nice things, statements in it. And, you know, I, I've looked through some of these, you know, I keep saying, wow, wow, unbelievable. Um, you know, you get very nice comments. Um, you, you're doing something right, right? Well, thanks. And again, it's because I'm, I'm try we're trying to focus on what the patient wants and what they need. Uh, and that's very important so that it's not so much what I want, but why are they here and what do they want? Uh, the patient that you, you were looking at, her letter, her name was Sharon, and she said for years she hadn't smiled. She's in her 40s, was ashamed of her look, um, also felt that people didn't respect her, Armin, which is really, um, in a sense, very sad because of the way her teeth looked. And she was actually a Golden Opportunities viewer and an Angie's List person. Uh, she came in and said, I have a limited amount of money. I want to focus on my upper teeth. So on the lower teeth, we did some reshaping. We did some whitening. We were able to do that with some porcelain veneers just for, again, she said we'll do it in stages, again, because that's what she could afford. So the key was to listen to what Sharon had to say. It's always bothered her. What could we do in a nice way? A Golden Opportunities viewer, she once joined us here. Very spiritual woman, took care of everybody, uh, and thought it was her time to get herself a bright smile. And actually, she said she learned a lot from this show. So again, very gratifying. It's great. Well, thank you, Steve. Thanks for pointing out the sorts of things that people should look for apart from what actually goes into the mouth. Thanks, Very Robert. important. It's thank really you. my pleasure. Before selecting a dentist, check him or her out. Check references like you do for any professional. We can all appreciate how challenging it can be to appreciate your dentist. If you'd appreciate more information, give Steve a call. His number's up next. See what Dr. Stephen Marsh can do for your smile by calling 440 Four six one one zero zero three, or visit www.clevelandsmiles.com. Next, checking in to a Cleveland landmark. It's time to get up and go. An exercise minute on golden opportunities. Hello everybody, I'm Mike Carvin from Breakout Fitness and today we're here to show you how to stretch the ever important hamstrings in the back of the leg. These muscles are very important because not only do they help us get around, but they help us get up and down stairs. You ready to show them how to stretch them out? I'm ready. Alright, let's do it. We're going to start seated underground. Here in the studio we have our mats. You at home, any firm surface you feel comfortable sitting on will do. We want to make sure we maintain good posture and have our feet out in front of us. All we're going to do is try to keep the backs of our legs on the ground as we lean and try to grab our toes. So feel a good little stretch. We're going to hold it for a 5 to 10 count. And then we're going to go ahead and relax. Let's try it one more time there, see if we can get a little bit further. How you doing, Armand? Uh, my arms are too short. <laughs> Good job. Keep practicing. Get out there. Keep the back straight. You're doing fine. We're looking there for we five to it. ten seconds. Hey! <laughs> we're looking for five to ten seconds. Two or three times will get you nice and warmed up. And now it's your turn to get up and go. For your copy of the exercise booklet, please send one dollar for postage to Golden Opportunities, 23240 Chagrin Boulevard, Suite 450, Beachwood, Ohio, 44122. Who would have thunk? Right in our own neighborhood, there's a place where the past meets the present, where stars have stayed and world travelers reside, where Spanish flair has an address right in the heights, and where seniors find a very special home. Janet Hildebrandt's here to take us on a tour of the Alcazar. Janet's the Marketing and Public Relations Manager for this lovely landmark. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, it's so good to be here, Armand. All right, when did the Alcazar open? Start there. Okay, the Al Alcazar opened 90, 90 years ago in um, October 1st of 1923 okay. in Cleveland Heights. What was it then? And it opened as a type of, of hotel that was very much in vogue at that time, a residential hotel, very posh. Um, offering short term and long term. And there were Hollywood people and musical people that stayed there. Absolutely. Tell us some That's of the famous right. people, and we're going to run through pictures as we okay. talk okay. so that people can just get a sense. Well, we've, we have records that Cole Porter okay. wrote his Night and Day All there. Right. 
And you remember Tarzan from the movies? I do, okay, of course. Johnny Weissmuller. Okay, and did he swing on the chandeliers he, in the building? Uh, not All that right. I know of, but um, a story handed down from a bellman at the time said that he and his then wife, Lupe Velez, loved fresh chicken. And across the street, across Cedar Road, uh, there was a market that sold very fresh, I mean, mm. still clucking. And they would keep the chicken in their bathtub until dinner. Um, we also have stories that Bob Hope stayed there, Mary Martin, Jack Benny. Very so good. Lots, lots now of today, folks. does yeah. the Alcazar still serve in the same way? It, 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 we, we have four uh, four services right now, Armand. Um, what, what our primary reason for being is an apartment, okay. uh, rental apartments for those who are 55 and better. Is that a picture of yes, what an apartment looks like? Uh, that's right. Okay. That's right. We also offer short-term and long-term accommodations, uh, B and B, as well as furnished apartments hmm. with full kitchens for our extended stay okay. uh, guests, as well as a venue for special events. Very where people nice. want to hold a wedding or a family reunion or a meeting. Great. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so how do people find out more about the Alcazar and what's available and when they can be there? When they can, right. Um, I'd be happy to give anybody a private tour if they want, want oh, to come, nice. as a matter of fact. But um, we have a website, uh, the Alcazar, uh, www.thealcazar.com. Okay. We'll and give that later. Good. Okay. Good. And uh, you have special events there as well. Can people do a party there? Can they come in for things? Yes, uh, absolutely. On our website, we, we show special events that are open to the public. In fact, this Monday night, we are having April in Paris within the Spanish walls. And these are of the some Alcazar. of the Spanish walls right yes, there. Yes, that's the courtyard. Very that's, beautiful. That's right outside the main lobby. That's right. So we do Great. offer that. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, you're close to downtown. But as we saw in the picture of the mm -hmm. courtyard, you have a lot of space and, and greenery and things like that yes. right there. Yes, the, the Alcazar was built to fit the shape of the land, so it's an irregular pentagon. No one of the five sides matches another. In fact, nothing in the Alcazar matches another. It's, it's quirky and it's wonderful. And you're, you're right near but University Circle and all the amenities right there. right up Cedar Hill. That's great. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. thank you so much. This you're is so welcome. such a treasure for us Thanks here for in, having in, me. in Northeast Ohio. The name Alcazar might mean fortress, but walk through its doors and you'll be welcomed into an open-hearted space where hometown and worldwide guests mingle. To make yourself at home at the Alcazar, give them a call. My thanks to Janet Hildebrand for checking in to help us check out this timeless treasure. For more information, call the Alcazar at 216-321-5400 or click to www.thealcazar.com. Next, a strategy for cost-free loans. They haven't been inducted to a Hall of Fame. They don't get stopped for autographs or photos. They don't have entourages or shoe deals. But they still deserve our applause and admiration. Because they are fighters. Believers. Heroes. We are the Metro Health System. We are the proud sponsor of the comeback. Could you use some extra money for a short time? Let's say you're buying a new place, but the sale of your present home hasn't yet closed. And maybe you need some money for a month or two. Or maybe you just received a big bill from that dream vacation or medical costs. And a few thousand dollars sure would help tide you over. There's a little known strategy to get a short-term loan for no cost. Here to explain is my long-term partner, Mike Solomon. Thanks for joining us, Mike. So how do we get a short-term loan for no cost? Well, it can be real easy. Let's say you have an IRA. You, take, you can take the money out of the IRA. You can keep it for 60 days. And if you put it back in the IRA within that time period, there's no income tax due. There's no penalties. There's no cost, no interest, no, no any of those expenses. So that's basically a 60-day interest-free loan. And you can take an unlimited amount? There's no limits on That's right. To take Whatever out? you have in your IRA, you can take the entire amount out if you want, as long as you put it back within 60 days. If you don't, then you're going to owe interest. I mean, you're going to owe taxes and possibly penalties. What if I need money for longer than 60 days? Is there any benefit, any solution to that? Yeah, there, there's one uh, strategy that most people are unaware of. And, and let's say, for example, you have 
uh, three IRAs, or you take your IRA and you divide it into three separate IRAs. And let me use a number. Let's say you have 50000 in each IRA. You take 50000 out of the first IRA. You can keep the money for 60 days. And then from IRA 2, you take 60000 from there on the, on the 60th day, put it back in IRA 1, so you've repaid that. Now you have the money in the IRA from IRA 2 for 50 that you've taken out. And then from IRA 3, after 60 days, you take money out of that, you put it in IRA 2, and then in another 60 days, you've got to finally put that last 50000 back in. You've basically borrowed money for 180 days, interest-free, uh, no cost, no expenses. Is this... Can you do this over and over again, or is it once a year, or how well, often Well, you're only you allowed this? to take money out of an IRA once a year and put it back like that. So okay. each, that's why you have to have three separate IRAs. You can't keep doing the same IRA over and over again. Any other way besides taking from one, then filling it with another, then filling it with another? Any other way to get a longer-term loan? Yes, for example, for free? Let, yes. Well, for free, uh, in a sense, if you borrow money from your 401k, and most 401ks allow you to borrow money, you can borrow up to one half of your vested balance, up to $50,000. But you have to pay interest on the loan. So in a sense, it's free because you're paying yourself. You're taking money out of your pocket and you're putting it back in your 401k. So Does it's that have to be paid back in 60 days also? No, no. With a 401k, you can have up to five years to pay it back, monthly payments of principal and interest, and pay it back over five years. Can you pay it back sooner than five years if you want to? Sure, you can always pay it back sooner. What about a pension plan? Can you do the same thing from a pension plan? That depends on the pension plans. A lot of pension plans don't give you that ability. What you need to do is talk to your plan administrator and find out if they allow you to borrow from the plan. And the same rules apply. You can borrow up to $50,000, have to pay it back over five years, except in some limited situations when you're like, buying a house and you can pay it back. But from over. a 401k, I can borrow as much as is in there, up to 50000 Up to 50000 Half your balance. Half up to, to 50000 yes. And then... Uh, I, but I'm paying interest, but I'm paying it to myself. That's right. And then there are limits that you can't keep doing it you know, every month. Oh, I paid down 1000 Now I'm going to borrow another 500 There are, there are special rules there. That's great. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate okay. that. Do you need a short-term loan? You can tap your IRA or 401k at no cost if you know the rules. For more information, give Mike a call. The number's up next. Call Butish, Solomon, Steiner, and Peck at one 888 Two three six five one seven three for more information or to schedule a speaker for your organization, or log on to www.beautishandsolomon.com. Thanks for joining us today. We got a lot of great stuff on next week's show, and until then, please make the most of your golden opportunities. Would you like to join our kitchen conversation? All you have to do is call toll-free 1-877-765-1543 and leave us your question, name, and phone number. Or log on to www.golden.tv for all the latest information and show updates.